Welcome to the Life Self Mastery Podcast, where we bring in entrepreneurs who have created online businesses and improved their lifestyles. Here's your host, Rohit Malhotra. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm really excited to share that I've started a, I've created a, a new virtual summit, which is called Angel Summit, where I've organized uh, you know d- discussion and sessions with uh, some of the biggest uh, angel investors and VCs in the world uh, with the likes of Fabrice Grinda who's the uh, founder and partner at FJ Labs, uh, Sachit Rahman, Phil Nardal, Shruti Gandhi and others uh, which you can have uh, access to uh, the, uh, the three-day virtual summit which is happening from 18th to 20th of October and the Angel Summit is split into three different modules with a broad range of expert opinions. You can learn about how to invest into startups by learning, you know, how to network, how to build your reputation as an angel investor. Uh, there's no need to travel, it's completely free to attend. And you know, with over 100,000 new startups launched uh, this year, you can't afford to not to stay ahead of your competitors. Uh, so the free ticket, uh, you can get it at yeah, angelsummit.co. I'll also put that in the show links. Uh, uh, so it's called angelsummit.co. It's going to happen on 18th and 20th of October. Really looking forward to see you guys around there. Thanks. Hi, everyone. This is Rohit from Lifestyle Mastery. Today, I'm thrilled to have uh, Liz Velarde, uh, who's the uh, co-founder and acting CEO at Tele, Tele Corporation. Uh, uh, she's a... Uh, 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 has been responsible for development and execution of companies' uh, strategic plans. And in addition, she's responsible for leading a multidisciplinary team that has created a technology successfully tested on patients with prostate cancer and for the isolation and analysis of circulating tumor cells with pre-sales that exceeds $1.4 million. Now, Villar's outstanding work has been highly recorded by international institutions such as Carter Women's Initiative Awards and We Exchange in October 2019. She was acknowledged as one of 50 most relevant people who were transforming Mexico and was invited as speaker on various international panels. Uh, welcome to the show, Dele. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rakit. And thank awesome. you for investing in us. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Uh, 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 no, it's been, it's been a pleasure, you know, because, you know, uh, the, what you're trying to solve is extremely difficult, but... Uh, but I wanted to understand, you know, what was your journey to get into startups and why did you uh, build Deleco? Sure. Uh, well, I, we we met together, the three founders, uh, Alex, Juan Felipe, and myself back in college in 2012. And we were wor- they were working uh, on cancer specifically. Okay. Uh, they are scientists, engineers, uh, Alex is a physicist, and uh, Juan is a biomedical engineer, and myself, I'm focusing on business, and they presented to me a solution, only the design of it, <laughs> the computer design of, of uh, a technology that could help to isolate circulating tumor cells. When they presented to me the, the technology, I was amazed about the work and I absolutely thrilled to, to help them out. We didn't think about creating a company at that stage yet. We were in college. We only wanted to get the technology to work in order to help patients. The three of us had suffered before of uh, family losses because of cancer. And we understood that cancer is a really complex disease, really complex. The problem with cancer is that not only you need to detect early cancer, you also need to do a correct follow-up of the patient because we realize that at least that's the common thing that happened between us, that when you are diagnosed with cancer, they put you on some treatments and then one year later, the doctor says to you, like, okay, it did, didn't work. We need to try another thing. And treatments are really expensive all around the world. So which treatment do you need to apply for that patient? And why does the first treatment didn't work in the first place? 
we made that's your invest, investment to help my my loved one and you are getting me out of money and and my family is suffering so uh, most of patients at the end died and that's why the second lyric cause of death were wild and we discovered uh, through some publications that circulating tumor cells were part of the key to help solve that problem. Circulating tumor cells are cells that come from the tumor and are traveling free around the body. If you can capture them and analyze them, that's huge. It's like getting <laughs> the whole information about the tumor in, the, in just one cell. So the trouble was to actually capture them alive and do analysis on those cells later. Because they are so tiny in amounts, it's like finding uh, one to 50 uh, most wanted people of the Interpol in a background of five times the population of Earth. So that was the first challenge. And the second challenge is, okay, you capture them. But did you capture them alive? Did you capture them like uh, how the, the biology is needed? So you can extract information of them because only count them is not enough. You really need to get information of those cells. So now doctors can get uh, and make guided decisions about the treatments. And that took us uh, eight years to develop from the idea to have a technology already tested on patients. And at the beginning, we, we didn't have a lot of money. Actually, what we did is that we started make collaborations with universities to have access to some equipment. And for money, uh, actually the first, the first investment that we got was from Heineken, the beer company. Was it? Oh. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and FEMSA. Uh, the way that happened is uh, in, back in 2012, when we met, uh, we got a chance to do an elevator pitch in an elevator with the CEO of Heineken. Oh. So <laughs> at that time, uh, I was doing the pitch. My other two co-founders that weren't co-founders at the time yet, they didn't know what, what I was doing. So uh, I pitched to him the idea, only the vision of the, te of the, of the technology to be in the market, what we want to do and why we wanted to do it, only to help people and for us to help our families to not suffer to that part again. And at the end, he told me like, okay, uh, what do you need from me? And I answered him like, Anything you can give me will help me like greatly. Uh, I do want to give me some advices. I do want to connect me with someone. If you want to get me money, that will be great. And he told me like, okay, you got it. Do you have a card? And after that, uh, we got a follow-up meeting and we received uh, $50,000. Yeah, no liquidity. So no equity uh, app, and with that money, we started building the first prototypes. And yeah, at the beginning, it was a try and error to see what worked. We tried almost every technology around in the market, more than in the market on research stage. So we read a lot of papers uh, to see what was working. And we tried them and we started to figure out what worked and what, what didn't. We got some government grants. And after that, we were accepted into Y Combinator when, the, when we could demonstrate that the technology was working on, on a lab scale. Oh, this was winter 2017. Yes, until 2017, yes. Because at first you... In order for you to calibrate the technology, what we did is that we take blood from our cells <laughs> and we speak it with uh, cancer cells that we grow in a lab. 
In that way, we knew how many tumor cells were in the sample. We mix it together with our blood, and then we put it inside the technology, and at the end, we count how many tumor cells we were capturing. And when we, we managed to get over 96% of all the cells, we decided, like, okay, this is a good time to enter into Y Combinator. And... And YC actually, they accept us in the first try. Wow. <laughs> it was really, yes, it was really amazing and a really uh, nice experience to, to be around a lot of entrepreneurs with every industry. And they ask us to, to try to, to test the technology on patients. Uh, we did the first sample and it worked and we we put it into demo day and that was really amazing because after demo day I don't know how it happened but I have only seen it into Y Combinator uh, we raised 1.2 million after one week no. <laughs> yes <laughs> so after raising the money we decided like okay now we need to get this things done and to start uh, creating the final version of the technology. And we hire engineers and not only engineers, PhD doctorates in different areas because you need to surround yourself, as you said earlier, with really smart people <laughs> if you want to, to create something that matters. And we yes. did. And yeah. Got it. So, so just for listeners, you know, so, uh, so basically, uh, this is a blood testing device, which analyzes your, your circulating tumor cells, and uh, which yes. helps in uh, diagnosing uh, cancer and, you know, ma- monitoring the, uh, the, the effectiveness of, 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 the, of the test and all. But um, are, are you only looking at solving some of the, uh, the cancer problems, like like pancreatic and all, or are you looking at all area of, uh, you know, cancers, uh, you know, I believe, uh, you know, the, the, the many different uh, types of cancers. So are you looking at specifically trying to solve only one cancer or looking at solving uh, all those problems at the same time? Uh, our goal is to go to the whole, um, all cancers that came from organs. Okay. Yeah, uh, we have tested so far on breast, colorectal, prostate, and liver okay. on the lab. But to get it to patients, you need to follow first one and then going for the next one. And so, uh, because it costs money to go through FDA. So our first try is prostate cancer. Uh, why? Because prostate cancer, <laughs> if you compare it with other type of cancer, as for example, cervical or breast cancer in women, right. uh, for, for men, you actually don't have much to test for prostate cancer. The only thing that you have is the PSA, prostate specific antigen test, that is not specific for cancer. It only tells you how the prostate is. But it doesn't tell you if you have cancer and what stage is the cancer and all that. So physicians have to get biopsies from men in order to to say, okay, you have cancer. And a biopsy actually is the gold standard for to get information about the state of the cancer of the patient to first diagnose and to second uh, to estimate the stage of the patient. But you cannot perform biopsies every two months, <laughs> every month, right? Right. right. Uh, it's a surgery. Oh, so okay. we decided, like, okay, uh, let's go to prostate. There is nothing for men, so we can get them to have an option. And also, prostate cancer is a really uh, interesting cancer. If I may put it in simple words. Uh, right. You may have like, there are like two most type of prostate cancers, the one that uh, allows you to live shortly and the one that lets you live like 10 years. Which one do you have? You don't know. Right. And at least uh, doctors in the United States 
in Latin America, uh, they don't want to, they don't want to gamble about your life and to, to gamble to see which, which cancer do you have. So what happens is that with prostate cancer, they overtreat the patients. So maybe they don't need so much uh, chemos for the cancer. You only need one or they only need one specific uh, chemo. Right. But see, they don't know which, which cancer you have. So they put you like everything they have. And they go, and that comes with secondary problems, right? So we say like, okay, uh, this tool can help them understand which type of cancer do they do the patient presents, and to understand now which treatment do the patient needs. And since it's only a blood test, uh, the blood test what it does is that it uh, it processes the blood in less than 15 minutes, and in less than 15 minutes, you can recover the CTCs. After that, uh, you can perform analysis of them, either in the microscope that we design. The microscope, what it does is uh, inside the machine, we color the cells, and we put it inside the microscope, and the microscope takes pictures and identify in seconds uh, how many tumor cells there are, and is that e and if they present a specific mutation link to a treatment. You can do that or you can do molecular testing, a gene sequencing, for example. And with that information, now doctors can see which treatment do the patient have and which treatment do the patient needs. And right. they can have that info every two weeks or every month according to the needs of the doctors. Right. And that's right. So awesome. Right. <laughs> Today, I have an interesting stat for you to denote that the founder of Beautiful Lives increased the social media presence by 10x. They managed to publish consistently and effortlessly using a robust social media management tool called Social Pilot. Social Pilot is a cost effective social media tool that helps businesses scale their social media marketing efforts. Use lifestylemastery.com slash social pilot to get a 14 day free trial. No, absolutely. Uh, 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 you know, Lisa, before, before the call, we were, we were discussing about uh, why, uh, you know, startups in last, uh, say, 10, 15, 20 years have been, have been able to uh, make pe people come together through, through Facebook and other social media websites, but we've not been able to solve complex problems like, like cancer. <laughs> so so why, why do you think, you know, uh, uh, we've not been able to, to solve cancer? Uh, do you think it's, uh, I mean, you mentioned that it's because of less clinical uh, trials, but but w what do you think is is the, is the crux of the problem? Uh, is is it uh, you know not enough test trials are happening, or is it because uh, you know there is uh, a bit of a corruption in the medical industry on this? Okay, uh, that's an interesting question. Actually. <laughs> I must recall to the beginning when I said that cancer is a really complex disease. Right. It, it is. Is it, is it because Can of the lifestyle? Uh, people have those sort of lifestyle. That's why they get cancer because in last, I think last 30 or 40 years, you know, the cancer has started rivaling uh, heart disease. Uh, it never used to be there or, you know, uh, maybe we did not have much understanding about cancer. But do you think it's because of the lifestyle changes? Like people have... Uh, started eating more or, uh, you know, because of the lifestyle problem or uh, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, um, actually, as you mentioned, the incidence of cancer or the way that people get cancer is going to be increasing over the, over the years. Right. It cannot be <laughs> like, uh, for example, you can uh, get to manage COVID, coronavirus, but you cannot manage cancer. What you can do you right. can make cancer as a chronic disease and make it curable. Yes, that's, that's the goal that we want to, to get as a medical device community, as a community of healthcare, to get cancer curable. And how do you do that? Well, first, yes, you need continuous stream of information about the state of the patient. And second, you need new treatments. What is cancer? Cancer per se is a mutation of the people's own cells 
that instead of killing each other when there is a mutation as it normally does, it replicates, it replicates the mistake, it replicates the mutation, and it starts affecting other cells until it grows in a way that you cannot stop it. So in that, in that way, for every person in the world, cancer is going to be unique. So there cannot be an universal cure for cancer. But when it can be done, you can create different types of treatments and you need to know then which treatment you need to get from those treatments that is being developed by pharma companies. Interesting. So, so, so what you're saying is uh, there's no universal solution to, to solving cancer, uh, but it can be cured, right? I mean, uh, it, yes. do you think in next, you know, wh what is the time frame you have in the next 20 or 10 years we can solve the problem? Yes. Uh, the good thing about what we are developing is that we are getting information about cells from different populations. So when we get it to the market, uh, the idea for us is to start selling it as a research tool for cancer in, at the end of this year for all research communities to start testing it in different kind of populations and to get info about those populations. You can even get to know if there are new mutations uh, in a certain certain population. And with that info, uh, pharma companies can develop new treatments for that specific uh, set of population. So that's the idea, to not compete uh, with everyone, but to actually uh, deliver results and deliver information so that everyone can be a beneficiary of this technology. Because what we are enabled is to, we're giving them information. Right. Got it. And, and, you know, you've built a product called Cytocatch, uh, which is, which will, uh, uh, you know, do simple blood extraction and uh, so that uh, uh, it can, uh, you know, isolate uh, uh, tumor cells. Uh, if, you know, is that the purpose of the, of the device? Yes. To not only uh, isolate circulating tumor cells, but to also do the analysis on site. Uh, right now, the way that is uh, being done in the United States is that uh, you take a blood sample from a patient and you send it to a lab to wait for results, a centralized lab, a clear lab. But by doing that, you are waiting for your results at least five to seven weeks. And cancer is a disease of time. You cannot waste time to certain cancers because it would kill the patient. So uh, our approach is to put our technology in every hospital, in every clinic, so that physicians can have the information on the same day. Got it. And you don't have to wait weeks. And in that way, you can act faster and act when you can do something. Got it. So, so your business model is, is a B2B model where you want to uh, ship yes. your, your devices to hospitals. Okay. And, yes. and, and you want to focus uh, uh, in, in Mexico for now? In Mexico allows me to do trials at lower cost than doing uh -huh. in the United States. Got it. But our focus is first to sell it as a research and to start the diagnostics later to FDA. And by having FDA, uh, it allows you to open to different markets because of the equivalence. So it's easier for me to go to later to, to Canada or to, to Latin America, right. even right. in Asia, Asia or, or Europe it. by having the FDA. Got it. And, and have you decided on, the, on what, what, what is the sort of pricing you, uh, you want to keep for uh, this device? Uh, we don't have a final price yet, but okay. our idea was always to get it affordable to the public. So in that way, as a business, we prefer to win by selling a lot of tests than by selling a really high price to only certain people. Because uh, the idea of this technology is to, 
to do it first as a diagnostics. And after you are being diagnosed, uh, we're going to keep following you to all the treatments. Uh, and in the final five years, because when you are declared like, okay, uh, there is no more tumor, you right. get into five-year remission period. Right. When the doctors just keep doing follow-ups on you to see if you get a metastasis to develop cancer in another side of the body in the next five years. So we're going to, to follow you through that. And when you pass the five-year period, then yes, you are cancer-free. Oh, awesome. And, and do you have other competitors who are trying to solve the same problem? Yeah, there are a lot of companies. Um, most of them are following the CLIA lab example that I told you. When okay. you send your sample and then you wait weeks until you get the results. And, but we are one of the few companies that are doing everything just one side. And not only the isolation of CTCs, but also providing the analysis to help doctors to just focus in on the patients. Correct. And, uh, you know, you've, uh, just, you just uh, created an MPV and you plan to uh, ship all these products in the quarter four uh, of 2020, but how do you plan to get your, you know, first hundred of us thousand users? Oh, two thousand users. Yes. Uh, that's a really good question. Um, the best bad scenario that we have is to get manufacturing contracts and to expand our operation inside. So what we do right now is that uh, we, we design every piece of our equipment and we send it to manufacturers and then they send us back the pieces and we have a integration facility where we put everything together and then we ship it. Got it. So, so yeah, that area to have our components, not like, Small component, but more, yeah. <laughs> Got, it. Two more. Got it. And, uh, you know, so this is a B2B product, right? So uh, what are your plans on, uh, you know, uh, on marketing the, the product or, you know, what is the B2B marketing for, uh, for a complex product like yours? Sure. Uh, since we're doing first into a research market, uh, the first, uh, the best way to market in this technology is through go to Congress, Congress of doctors and researchers, uh, and present our results, and also do collaborations with universities for them to publish the results with patients. Uh, we are working with collaborations with Stanford University in the United States and other universities in Mexico. So as long as they can keep uh, publishing the results of their, their research with our technology, it's, going, it's as marketing for us. Got it. And, uh, you know, you've, uh, very interestingly, as you mentioned, you, you call it a Y Combinator and uh, you've also raised funding from, uh, from, a, uh, from a Mexican VC firm called uh, Lena Ventures, is it? Ah, uh, Ileana? No, Ileana. they are. Uh, <laughs> no, actually, they are the ones that uh, put one million, and they are from okay. the United States. Oh, that's awesome, got it. And um, uh, but you now use a crowdfunding, crowdfunding platform like uh, Republic uh, to to raise your next round of funding. You know, uh, why did you use the crowdfunding platform rather than you know raise the next round of funding from VCs? Uh, well, first, uh, crowdfunding allowed me to know a lot of people. <laughs> right. Yeah, most, most of our crowdfunding investors are also doctors. So it's nice to have like uh, this type of uh, touch, first touch with our future clients. You, you see it that way. Uh, the second of all, it allowed you to raise funds faster than doing uh a normal process with formal VCs. Right. And since actually uh, one of our YC companies fellows uh, that we asked 
for a uh, what do you recommend us for fundraising for a medical device company because they are medical devices was Inamet. Inamet was one of the companies that raised one million to Republic and right. they told like okay uh, if you want the money to get the technology to the market and you don't need that much money just do crowdfunding and when you are done and you get the technology in the market then raise a bigger amount of money through uh, busy firms to get to the regulation of FDA and that's what we did in that way uh, what Sorry. you are oh, everyone helping us is to get the technology to the market and get some cash and to later on get to a bigger round of VC funding to go to the FDA. Got it, got it, interesting. And uh, you know, uh, uh, the amount of funding that you're raising, what is uh, the money to be used for? The money is being used purely uh, for product development. The research is already been done. The technology is already working. So the money will be used for us to put the technology into the market as a research first. And yes, to run more tests on patients. So first, uh, we're going to continue with our work on prostate cancer patients and to later on to, to start trying with other types of cancers as breast or cervical cancer. Got it. Yeah. Got it. So, so other than you, you know, who, who else is in your team uh, who's helping you out? Oh, we have, uh, we have several people uh, inside the company that we are paying salaries. Uh, we are a team of 18 people now, uh, mostly with PhDs okay. and masters in different areas. So, Actually, everyone has a different career in the company. Uh, we got biotechnologists, yeah. biologists, molecular biologists, PhDs, and optics, electronics, physics, biomedical engineer, mechatronics, electronics, auto, um, robotics. So yes, <laughs> we are design. We have everything. So the first challenge for us to of having such a diverse team was communication. How can you make <laughs> the, the guys from electronics to communicate with, with the team of biology and for them to understand each other? So yes, it took us a few months <laughs> for us to do that in a correct way. But now they communicate fluently and the idea of us, we, Every day we approach them like to get into the same room, like, okay, you need to talk and you need to explain for the biology team, what are your needs? What do you need from the electronic team? And now the electronic team, they need to explain what are the limitations of the technology or the limitations that is state of the art right now for them, for them to present solutions to the biology team. And now the marketing and everyone on to get together in some one one channel but yes you need to do like at first uh every you have to do daily daily meetings with them so they can understand each other at the beginning got it got it uh so uh you know i uh usually uh end the podcast with a top three question so uh do you have any favorite business book Ah, favorite business book. Well, right now, one of my tops is uh, The Hard Thing About Hard Things. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's... Yeah. <laughs> I, I really think that they explain so well <laughs> how to create right. something new and to put it into a market. I can really relate with, with the author. I can't remember what you think. Right. And, you know, if, uh, if you could go back in time when you started building Delhi, uh, what is the one thing you would have focused on or done anything differently? Oh, wow. Uh, good point. Hmm. That will be like 
maybe raising more money at the beginning. Uh, at first, since we weren't a company yet, we went to a lot of business contests and to win some prizes so that that money can help my, my co-founders to build part of the technology. But I think that it will be wiser for us to, to maybe start uh, with a collaboration with a Ivy League or any university, big university first, than doing a lot Sorry. of business and contests. That it took us a lot of time. Got it, got it. So, so raise more money. And uh, do you have any favorite online tools, example, Gmail, Slack, Zoom? Okay, uh, well, uh, for communications, I always prefer Zoom. And uh, for internal communications inside the company, we are using Basecamp. Actually, it's oh, pretty cool. Yes, because it's, it's less expensive than Slack. <laughs> Yeah, uh, so sure. Um, and uh, 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 you know, what is the way, uh, way people can reach out to you and know more about the company? Yes, uh, they can reach to us directly to our crowdfunding platform right. or to our social media channels. We have Facebook, YouTube, uh, Twitter. We read everything. So, yes, we are Got it. always we'll put- checking. We will put that in the in the show notes. Uh, uh, Liza, thank you so much for coming onto the show. I really enjoyed speaking to you, and best of luck for solving such an incredible problem which you're trying to solve. Uh, thank you so much to you, and thank you for giving us this opportunity to to speak and to share our story. Thank you, Rohit. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Life Self Mastery Podcast, where we teach you how to start and grow your online business. For more information, visit Rohit's blog at www.lifeselfmastery.com.